So today what I will be doing is I will be reacting to Honkai Star Rail version 1.4 special program Jolted Awake from a Winter Dream. Now, <coughs> I'll be very, very frank. I don't know what to expect in this special program. <laughs> I really don't know what to expect because I'll be frank, Honkai Star Rail ever since day one they have been doing nothing apps uh, nothing but tremendous and amazing job so far. I will, I will I kid you not. They've been doing an amazing um, job so far with, with the content they have done. They have done with the um, with the updates they, they did. <coughs> and despite the fact that it's a turn based game, which kinda puts uh, turns people off because we're in the era of um, action RPG Honkai Sariel has been has done nothing but an amazing job regardless with their content like I said I don't know what to expect in this um, special program I know I will be getting my hands on Jin Liu who happens to be voice the English voice is by um, Emily, who does anime cover songs and is also known as the oh. Scuff Queen. So long story short, um, Emily is the English voice for Jin Yu, which I will get my hands on because to this day, right, I do not have um, a main um, an ice element main DPS. And Jin Liu looks kind of interesting to say this, which is why I have been saving my resources for Jin Liu. I'm F2P by the way. So yeah, I've been saving up my resources and I think I have um, like what? At least a hundred special tickets? And not only, and as a matter, speaking of new characters right, there's another new character that, that will be coming out as well which is, um, I believe her name is Topaz. Um, I forgot who's the the English voice though, but I know her the, her Japanese voice is by uh, Nanjo Yoshina-san, who is um, from um, from what I remember, she is the uh, she's also the Japanese voice for Ayase Eri from the Love Life franchise. That's the only thing I remember. So, uh, but I want to check out. Um, but I want to I want to see Topaz gameplay first. And I'm pretty sure there's one more character, uh, a four-star character as a matter of fact. I forgot the name though, but still, regardless, I'll, I'll definitely will be checking out all these three characters' um, gameplay, which I'm pretty sure this um, special program will showcase um, later on. And as uh, and as for and hopefully, right, since they mentioned they had since uh, according. Since in the uh, the trail based mission, aka the main story quest, um, version one point three, they literally finished the um, the Zienjo Robo story arc. So I kind of so I kind of want to see where is their next um, destination. And considering the fact that Jiu is in the is in version one point four, right? I won't be surprised if there's some there's some sort of um extra episode or, or extra mission of uh, the Zenjo Robo arc of some kind. And I won't be surprised that um we will be getting companion missions of Jin Liu, Topaz, and the the one new character, once again I forgot the name of this story. So yeah, I I, I kinda I'm genuinely curious what um what I, what their companion mission is all about. And hopefully we get some answers on what uh, what happened to Jin Liu right after she got um, Mara struck, as shown in the um, in the animated short. What happened right after she got Mara struck in the animated short, and what uh, the Senjo Nobu story arc? Hopefully we get some answers as to what happened. This program is brought to you by the International Peace Corporation. Uh, huh? uh, hello there, much. Huh? How are you doing? No wonder she's the thumbnail. And my God. 
wash her, her, huh? Huh? her puppies. Uh, uh, we're live already? How about uh, then? Hey everyone, welcome to the program, and thank you to our sponsor, the Interastral Peace Corporation. I'm your host, Astral Express crew member, March 7th. I've been watching my favorite streamer in preparation, but this is still my first time hosting, so go easy on me if I mess up, okay? Uh, Wait, what was I supposed time? to say again? Uh, I, I think it was, uh, don't forget to like, uh, follow, and share, or I'll check it out. Uh, and then, cute. and then, oh, uh, without further ado, let's get right into the trailer. So, this version of 1.2 is all about Marsh 7? What's with that smart nose? Wait, they back in the love box? Silver Wolf? What is she doing here? Oh, Topaz! Join me in the dance. Let's bring this exquisite celebration to its climax. Okay. So, apparently, there's a tournament going on, right? For this version. Hello, Topaz. How you doing? Damn, she's sexy! <laughs> it looks like we'll be exploring back um, Bella Box from the way I see it. Oh, I remember that scene. Jing Liu! returned to the Law Fu so I could surrender myself to the Alliance and atone for my sins. This will be the last you see of me. Oh, done who? Alright, singing in action. Sword war. I wonder if Emily is watching this. I'm sure she will in her stream. I cloud quintet. It is time. Wait, Genius fighting against Blade? What's the meaning of that? Okay, interesting. Genius was fighting against Blade? Okay, we, <laughs> I need answers, man. I really need answers in the companion mission. So, once again, as I mentioned earlier, I really hope that. In this version 1.4, we um, are hoping to see um, Jing Yu's companion mission, and um, hopefully we get some backstory, backstory, some story on what happened right after she got Mara's truck and before the Zianzhou Lawful story quest. And I must say, holy hell, Topaz is sexy as heck. <laughs> oh, the, th the, th the thing is, I'm a freaking F to be player. Gosh, dang it! But uh, okay. At least let's check out how her gameplay is. I want to see her how her gameplay is though. I will admit Topaz is sexy as heck. But at the same time, I want to check out her gameplay. Jing Yu, we already have a glimpse of how her gameplay is in um in Yang Qing's companion mission. So I want to, I want to see um Topaz gameplay over here. Yeah, the Trailblaze journey continues. There's loads of fun stuff waiting Aww. for us out there. No Albert, really? It all on camera. Okay. Like Jing Liu. Never thought we'd meet a living Xianzhou legend. She's super interesting. Miss Jing Liu might look young and elegant, but people say she's experienced and super dangerous. I was a little nervous when the director told me I'd be introducing her today. Really? <laughs> So I thought, why don't I see if I can bring in another young, elegant, experienced, and dangerous lady to help me with the intro. Uh -oh. Next up, let's put our hands together and welcome Miss Himeko, navigator of the Astral Express. <laughs> wow, March. Is that how you see me? I'm very flattered. Uh-huh. Uh, Himeko, you're here already? 
That's right. I walked in just as someone happened to be calling me a young, elegant, experienced, and dangerous lady. <laughs> You're all those things? So, uh, you want to take it from here, Himeko? Sure thing. Where were we? Hi, everyone. As March said, I'm Himeko, navigator of the Astral Express. Today, okay. I'll be introducing you to a living Sienjo legend, Ching Liu. Music though, holy crap. Is that a Ultimate? Damn. Well, ever that's since cool. I first caught sight of her in Yenqing's tracking entries, I was completely hooked. She's Jin Yuan's previous master. I bet she's got all kinds of hidden stories to tell. As one of the High Cloud Quintet, she was once the strongest Swordmaster on the La Fu. Mm -hmm. However, due to the effects of Mara, she sometimes loses her grip on reality, perceiving herself as an unstoppable sword. Uh, <laughs> Jing Liu's so ruthless. She even attacked her apprentice's apprentice. And she figured out Yen Xing's fighting style just from the sound of his swords. I'd bolt if I saw her coming my way. I can't say I blame you. After the Mara took hold of Jing Liu, she became a different person. As for the day she crossed paths with Yan Qing, it was quite the twist of fate. I guess so. In any case, Jing Liu is unpredictable at the best of times. But if you catch her on a good day, she's as calm as moonlight on a silent night. <laughs> Nicely put. Her power is actually deeply connected to the moon's phases. Jing Liu is an ice type character following the path of destruction, mm. who uses two different states in combat. A different states? What's that? Mm, think of it this way. When Jing Liu is in prolonged combat, her Mara struck persona takes over and she changes states. Okay. When Jing Liu uses her skill, Transcendent Flash, she accumulates stacks of syzygy. Whoa! Okay. Isn't Transcendent Flash she the She literally just put a Getsuka Tensho right over there. The one that cuts through That's the literally itself? Getsuka you Tensho. You seem well versed in High Cloud Quintet stories, March. <laughs> when Syzygy stacks up to a set amount, yeah. Jin Liu That's literally Getsuka Tensho! And enters a spectral transmigration state. In the spectral transmigration state, mm -hmm. Jing Liu's every attack deducts a set percentage of HP from her ally's max HP. Okay. However, her attack increases according to the corresponding total HP consumed. Ah, uh, see? I told you she attacks her allies! While in the spectral transmigration state, Jing Liu's skill, Transcendent Flash, becomes Moon on Glacial River, and okay. she is unable to launch basic attacks. What? Moon on Glacial River doesn't consume skill points, but does consume stacks of Syzygy. When stacks okay. reach zero, Jing Liu exits the spectral transmigration state. Okay. Jing Liu's ultimate, Floor Ephemeral Dream Flux, deals a set percentage of her attack as ice damage to a single target and adjacent enemies, as single well target as granting her additional stacks of Syzygy. Whether okay. it's normal state ice beauty, Jing Liu, or red-eyed spectral transmigrator state, Jing Liu, she's one heck of a sword master. According to Sienjo records, she was taken by the Ten Lords before the onset of What March, am I looking and subsequently at? Detained in the what prison. am I looking at? The famous confrontation with her apprentice, Jing Yuan, would come later. <sighs> Becoming what Mara was that? an unavoidable fate for Sienjo long life species. But there's she freezes opponent as she approaches the them in the brand new 1.4 mission. Clouds leave no trace. Of course, an anonymous letter. Of course, Jin, of course, Jin Yu gets her companion it mission. It seems an unexpected visitor has extended an invitation and is looking to connect with Don Hung to delve deeper into the tale of the Sienjo. Who's that lady on? Who's that purple lady present? Though? But it's only right to give this story its What's that proper purple lady conclusion. Right, oh, why are we here? Valiant figures from times right, uh, of old, right, be, uh, right, be, familiar at, faces, at the bottom beside and find um, themselves in a world and, um, drastically in reshaped from the one they once knew. I heard the reason Jing Liu wears a blindfold is to avoid catching sight of certain objects on the Sienjo, the things that would trigger her memory and the Mara inside her. 
Well, not seeing isn't the same as not remembering. She's never forgotten those who fought alongside her. As for solving the Mara predicament, we'll just have to stay tuned for the upcoming Cien Joe story. Okay. Ah, oh, looks like Jing Liu's next move is gonna be trending all over the Cien Joe. Oh, hey, Himiko, what if I start doing my own live streams? They could track Jing Liu's every step. I bet they'd get loads the of hell? views. Sorry, March. I wouldn't recommend chasing trends. Your content will probably end up clashing with the IPCs. Lol. <laughs> uh, really? But my favorite streamers are always saying you gotta go with the hype. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, how do you think I'm doing so far, Himiko? For this episode, I did loads and loads of research. Plus, I got lots of tips from my favorite streamer. Hmm. And which streamer would this be? Ta-da! She's a streamer called Gwynaifen. Her streams are super Gwen entertaining. Gwynaifen? I can't say I've heard of her. You haven't? She's on the CN show, too. How about... I know. I'll tell you all about her. Okay. Way knife in. Yeah, this yeah, this is the four star character. Who's name? Okay. Interesting. Well, there was one night I couldn't sleep, and I ended up watching Gwenifen's Kwai Ban live stream. I've never heard anything like Gwen it. Gwenifen, I subscribed um, straight away. Fire, it was my nice CD. Her attire is very CN Joe. But it feels yeah, like she's very not from the long tail. <laughs> she's not from any of the Sienjo ships. I think her real name was Guinevere or something. Anyway, Gwe means fine wood, Nai means to exist, and Fen means fragrant. Su Shang okay. came up with it for her. She's her bestie. What lovely okay. imagery. <laughs> I know. Plus, if you think about it, Guinevere and Gwe Nifen do sound kind of similar. If you say them a few times, right? Uh, we might want to steer clear of wordplay, March. I heard the Cien Joe issues fines for that. Uh-huh. Seriously? <laughs> Cien Joe culture is vast and profound. There's still much to learn. Gwenaifen says that Su Shang is always schooling her on local culture and customs. Su Shang is as Cien Joe as it gets. I feel like everything I learned about the Cien Joe I learned from them. <laughs> Live streaming, Kwaiban, a passion for Sienjo culture. Gwen Ifen seems like a girl of many talents. She is! Although I feel like she mainly uses them to impress her bestie. <laughs> Did you know that Gwen Ifen is actually a street performer? Not to mention she's also super talented on the battlefield. Gwen Ifen is a fire type character following the path of nihility. When using her skill, Blazing Welcome, Gwynaifen launches firecrackers, dealing fire damage to her target and adjacent enemies with a chance of inflicting burn. Okay. After unlocking the trace, High Poles, her basic attack, Standing Ovation, also has a chance of inflicting enemies with burn. Okay. Hmm, I'm curious. Why firecrackers, exactly? Gwynaifen says that in Sienjo Legends, artists use firecrackers to fend off scary beasts. In okay. return, the nobility supported the artist financially. Gwynaifen is just continuing the tradition, and friendly locals are only too happy to support her. Funnily enough, her talent is called Patreon Benefits. When Gwynaifen is on the battlefield, Patreon an enemy sustains burn damage, I see what there's a you did chance they'll enter a fire kiss state. I see what you did there. Fire kiss is stackable and limited to a set number of turns. While in the fire kiss state, Enemies sustain increased it. damage. Which reminds me, I think Wayne Ifen live streamed a battle once too. Her ultimate, watch this showstopper, summons and detonates an even bigger firecracker in the form of a D Ting, dealing fire Explosion. damage to all enemies. Targets That's already inflicted with burns sustain additional damage as a set percentage of the fire damage. Is this what the kids call going viral? I'd love to see her combat livestream data. I bet it was an instant hit. <laughs> okay. About that. Her stream was taken down halfway through. 
What the I hell? I think she violated the platform's fire safety policy. <laughs> oh. What do you think? Got a better picture of Gwen Ifen now? Hmm. And I can see why you're so fond of her. <laughs> cool, isn't she? I'll message you the link to her streams right now. Sometimes she even sends gifts to her fans. Hey, Gwailings, check this out. Scale Gorge Spring Water, clear and tasteless, rich in calories. One sip. Ah, you just saved yourself a meal. Actually, I bought some five liter Scale Gorge Spring Water during Gwen Ifen's last stream. When you're watching her stream, you gotta be ready to grab the deals. They're awesome. Oh, wait a minute, March. If that's the case, those bottles of Scale Gorge Spring Water in the Express's storage room, you bought all of those? Yeah, what about them? Interesting. Just the other day, Welt was telling me about his new healthy lifestyle habits. Apart from exercise, he's been drinking eight glasses of water a day. Strangely enough, he's gained a little weight. Guess it must have been... Uh, so uh -oh. Mr. Yang was drinking the... <laughs> it's getting late, Himeko. We should get back to the show. The next person we'll be talking about is Topaz. <sighs> sure. So, who's Topaz? <laughs> Actually, I don't know either. Really? But the director said that Topaz works for the IPC. She even knows IPC. that presenter, Albert. Speaking of, let's get him on the line. He can introduce Topaz. Albert? Albert! Ah! Well, what the hell? Oh! Ooh, and whether or not your world has a day night cycle. Good morning, good, morning, good, good afternoon, afternoon and, and good, good evening. evening. I'm your good buddy Al. Uh, why did our art style change? <laughs> uh. On my show, we go by my style. Okay. Exactly. Allow me. Ah, uh, did that Albert's back in business. Astral Peace Corporation anchor to introduce to you my guest and IPC colleague, Topaz. Damn. <laughs> Woo. Damn, she hot. Is she hugging that. Okay, that's. I think that's a alt. Whoa. I'm pretty sure that's an ele elemental skill. Now my out shut up for now. Topaz is a rising star in the IPC Strategic Investment Department. Currently heading up and the special then, event picket team. Ooh. She's a combination of youth, elegance, and remarkable. Oh, she's ability. the path of the Han. The okay. Special dead okay, 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 okay. I think I've heard of them. Well, as you may know, among the universe's major investors and lenders, the IPC is a big fish. And with so many venture capital projects, there are bound to be bumps in the road. Topaz is our go-to person to smooth out the bumps and make sure we recover what's owed. Oh, I get it. So the corporation's in the red? <laughs> when dealing with defaulters, Topaz's methods are swift and effective, saving the IPC from many a potential loss. She also has a great knack for investments, turning even the bleakest projects into success stories and ensuring huge returns for the corporation. Wow, right. impressive! Does she have some kind of superpower? <laughs> Within the walls of the IPC, there is indeed a rumor that Topaz's stellar success might have something of the supernatural about it. Oh? Okay. Supernatural? Oh, reminds me of Gwen Ifen's ghost hunting streams. Ghost hunting? <laughs> Let's not jump the gun. Okay. When people think of Topaz, they don't think about ghosts, but a certain unmistakable companion. I'm talking about her warp driver. Numbi! They may look Numbie. like a cute mascot, but Numbi is Topaz's trusted sidekick, both at work and out on the battlefield. Right. Numbi has a keen sense for sniffing out wealth. Security checks, debt settlements, and calculations are all child's play for this little piggy. All right. Together with Topaz, they traverse the cosmos, resolving any and all debt disputes that could threaten the IPC's operations. Mm -hmm. Numbi is a legit employee, even have an official role and title. R really? Really. And don't forget, the corporate world mirrors the battlefield in more ways than one. Topaz's prowess in the former is just as swift and formidable in the latter. 
And you better believe, Numby, plays a huge part in that. Topaz and Numby are fire-type characters following the path of the hunt. At the start of an ally turn, if no enemy on the battlefield is inflicted with proof of death, Topaz will inflict this state on a random enemy, thereby boosting the follow-up attack damage. Then Increases follow-up attack During damage battle, received. Okay. Numby starts out with an initial speed and acts autonomously, attacking enemies inflicted with proof of death. Excluding Numby's zone turns, every time an ally follow-up attack hits an enemy inflicted with proof of death, Numby's action is advanced forward. Seems like Numby and Topaz share a strong bond. Mm, they make a yeah, tiny. she yeah she can Speaking combo with um Casper. Topaz's skill, difficulty brand, is able to reallocate proof of debt to a different target, allowing Numby to immediately launch an assault and deal a set percentage of Topaz's attack as fire damage to the new target. This counts as a follow-up attack. Topaz's okay. ultimate turn a profit allows Numby to enter the windfall bonanza state. Cute. In this state, damage and crit damage dealt by Numby both experience an increase. If that wasn't enough, every time an ally's basic attack, skill, or ultimate hits an enemy inflicted with proof of death, Numby's action is additionally advanced forward. After Numby launches a set number of attacks, this effect is dispelled. Whoa, Numby's got moves! Some believe that everything possesses a soul. I believe that if you treat all living things with genuine care, regardless of whether they're human, they'll respond in kind. <laughs> Hold Expect on to your subsidy. ass, folks. Numby's not done yet. Topaz and Numby's technique Oh my subsidy. gosh. Topaz to summon Numby when entering a map. Numby then oh my god, you can't be serious. People are going to get her even rate, more now. Leading Topaz right to the loot. The best part? Trotters That's a very good approach. feature, this man. Holy crap. Even consume technique points. If Topaz and Numby enter combat after using their technique, our little warp trotter regenerates a set amount of Topaz's energy after launching their first attack. That if is Topaz and Numby are still in the oh team my god. after winning that a battle, That's a in this way. The team that was a very a small cool amount feature. Of credits up to a set daily limit. And not no no we have um, a technique that prevents from being ambushed in version 1.3. Now we have a feature where a to uh, a we can we have someone <laughs> to search for treasures. Seems like Topaz and Numby have a bad cop, bad cop approach to debt collection. All that and oh, no I, I'm bus. in a dilemma now. We might as well call Numby the... The dilemma of a goddamn f 2 uh, <laughs> uh, Careful now. If there's an Eon of Prosperity out there, I doubt they will. out I'll be both, man. Droop it's old. Topaz doesn't care much about Numby's wealth-generating abilities. Here at the IPC, she has a reputation for being clean as a whistle. Money just isn't that important to her. Money is a means, not an end. Work should make you happy. <laughs> Topaz looks after Numby because she loves them. Simple as that. Right. That's not all I heard. In version 1.4, stag and shadow shape of scorch. Going live. Beat it, and you can you stag the essential, essential material, material boss required for Topaz and Gwynaifen. Oh, for Topaz and Gwynaifen, okay. Albert. Are you sure Topaz is just your colleague? It feels like she's got a way bigger role than you. What? <laughs> Clearly, you've never worked in a top-tier company. In esteemed enterprises like ours, we stress a horizontal approach to management. As long as one has their own methodology, finds their own niche, and employs their own strategy, they can exert unlimited influence and change the fate of a project. Much as ice. Mako, is he making any sense to you? I'm not quite following. Ah, ah. Look, I might not get the ins and outs of investing, but I know my way around the presentation deck. <laughs> Those dazzling slides on Topaz. You, my creation. <laughs> Impressive. Mm. Oh. It's all about making yourself indispensable in the workplace. And if Topaz were here right now, she'd acknowledge my presence with the utmost respect. How's it hanging, Owly? Hi, viewers. <laughs> Topaz. Hi, Topaz. How are you doing? That's my name. Don't wear it out. You guys probably mentioned already, but I work in the strategic investment department at the IPC headquarters. It's an honor to be here for Miss March 7th show today. And to meet Miss Himiko. <laughs> Hi, Topaz. Nice to meet you, too. Uh, Director Topaz, <laughs> what brings you here? 
A while ago, we received an investment application from the Interastral Peace Media Department. It seems the IPM's presenters want to expand the program's reach. Okay. As such, the corporation sent me to evaluate the program's performance. Okay. <laughs> Director Topaz, I'll show you my expertise right now. <clears throat> uh, so without further ado, let's unveil version 1.4's eagerly awaited five-star characters. During the first phase of 1.4 in the character event warp, Gentle Eclipse of the Moon, Trailblazers can acquire the limited five-star character Jing Liu. And mm -hmm. during the second phase of 1.4, two character event warps will become available. In the character event warp, Sunset Claws, Trailblazers can obtain the limited five-star characters Topaz and Numbi. Meanwhile, Jingy. in the character event warp, Butterfly on Sword Tip, the limited five-star character Zila will be making a return. Sunset Claws. And I almost forgot oh, to mention... Oh, the new character is in the... The, the new four character will be available in Sunset Claws. also be a part of these two second phase... Wait, what? Event Zila getting a... A rerun already? It feels like forever since we last saw her in Bellabog. Characters aside... We're oh, that was fast. We're anticipating version 1.4's five-star light codes. And 1.4's first phase light code event warp. The drop rate of the five star light code. Oh, wait, hold on a second. Which soul. means that like, she will be in the Boost. second half of um, sword wielding beauty the, again. the character oh. event walk. Standing there in the moonlight without her blindfold amidst Damn, all those that's flowers. such a fine looking light code, Quite I would say. Unforgettable! Meanwhile, in one that's point such a fine looking phase, light code, light code, code event warps, the drop rates for the five star light cones, Worrisome Blissful, and In the Night will be boosted. Wow, Topaz is so lucky to be surrounded by so many cute fluff balls. Wow. Can we get one for the express, Himeko? Oh, please. Topaz is surrounded I'm by that might not be possible. cute I remember creatures. Pom -pom saying they're not and not only that, right? Even Zila's uh, light cone is getting a rerun as well. But Pom Pom sheds tons of fur. You know, trotters like Numbi make great companions. They're non-shedding, low maintenance, and Super squishy. Plus, they can sniff out valuable treasures. <laughs> or, what about adopting a talking bird? <laughs> like Owly here. Wait, no. What? <laughs> Absolutely not. I I'm the star of the IPM. <laughs> and that wraps up today's Warp and Light Code segment. Um, Director Topaz, I, I was wondering, <clears throat> how did you rate my performance? <laughs> Let's talk about that later. The reason I'm here for March's show today is to present some small gifts to our esteemed viewers on behalf of the IPC. I'm not the best at crafting presentation decks, but here is a slide I worked up. Okay. Ad break. Okay. Oh. Jingyu. Lord. And then Topaz, Topaz comes in. Feel the frost in the space fantasy adventure Honkai Star Rail. And then we have Topaz. Money. Money, 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 money. <laughs> A timeless space fantasy adventure, Honkai Star Rail. Alright, because the place um, oh, Honkai Star Rail will be so available bad. in uh, on it's the PS5 you next take month. Time out of your schedule to be on the show. You must be pretty busy. <laughs> well, the corporation is a big part of my life. In fact, me and my team are heading out to business on Urillo Six very soon. Taking part in today's program was a nice change of pace for me. Oh, really, Urillo Six? We've been there. So, is this a debt collecting trip? <laughs> I'm afraid I can't comment on internal IPC matters. That said, I heard the Express crew will be heading to Urillo 6 Here for the Trailblaze Continuous Future Market. Looking forward to seeing you all in Bellabog. Huh? 
How did you know about that? Preliminary research is crucial for the Trail smooth Beast progression Cordulous. of any What project. does that mean? Our data collection lead informed me about a significant site on Eurilo 6, known as the Pillars of Creation. A memorial symbolizing centuries of Bellabogian resistance. Out of respect, I intend to pay a visit there with a few colleagues. Colleagues? Oh, where are my manners? Uh, let me introduce them. Senior staff, team leader, grunt, field personnel, and grunt. Security personnel. Uh, they okay. look pretty slick, but uh, I can't help but wonder. Are they enthusiastic about a trip to an ice planet? <sighs> I'm afraid enthusiasm doesn't come into it. The IPC's balance sheet isn't the best right now. We haven't got the capital to outsource missions like these. That explains the recent disturbance in the corporation. As if thousands of voices suddenly sighed in exhaustion. Let's set that silenced. Uh, <clears throat> let's set that aside for now. You know, I've heard all about the achievements of the Astral Express. I also heard that the train's navigator was a lady of unparalleled beauty and talent. It was a pleasure to meet you at last, Miss Himiko. <laughs> Another reason for coming on the show today? I hope I lived up to your expectations. You exceeded them. Next time, let's see if we can meet up in person. I'm sure we can make that happen. Once your work in Bellabog is done, perhaps you'd like to drop by the Express. <laughs> it's a deal. I've always wanted to set eyes on the Express. Jeez. We got a room for these guys already? Get a room? What does that mean? As another gesture of the corporation's goodwill, I'd like to introduce a brand new event for everyone to take part in. Okay. <laughs> Woohoo! Nice! Recognized universally as the leading video game brand, Ethereum Wars is set to unveil an offline fan event on Eurillo 6. The Interastral the, the most Tournament Festival. Online giving brand in the universe, Wars. Ethereum Wars is holding What's an offline Interastral Tournament Festival for fans on the Eurillo 6. To Compete for championship with your Ether Spirit companions. Must collect and nurture Ether Spirits. Which can be found within victory zones. Ether spirits? Okay. I venture to guess they're much like Numbi here. Digital replicas of creatures designed to serve as combat companions. Okay. Right you are, Miss Himiko. Your knowledge in this huh. area is surprising. Okay. I've heard a thing or two about the IPC's research and cultivation programs. Am I right in assuming that the aim of this event is Something to analyze new? the suitability of different species as fighting companions? We're controlling, um... Correct. And we stand so by our promise time? that no real-life creatures will be harmed during Ethereum Wars. The IPC has renovated an old weapons testing ground to serve as a tournament venue. We've also set up victory zones in different locations. Heard of Space Station, Eurillo 6, and the Sienjo Lafu. Those who manage okay. to defeat the championship contenders in each victory zone and complete the hyperlink challenges will be greeted with generous rewards. It's okay. also worth noting that Ether Spirits, both allied and enemy alike, are classified into three types. Mechanical, okay. Humanoid, and Aberrant. In combat, okay. these types have a cyclical relationship with each one countering another. Attacking enemies oh, that are vulnerable okay. to your current Ether Spirits type will allow you to deal extra damage. Oh, so picking a type that counters your opponents is super important. You exactly. Got it. Furthermore, as you advance through the competition, you'll gain access to the even more formidable Overlord Ether Spirits, which can okay. be developed to boost their combat prowess. <laughs> so the deeper you delve into the competition, the fiercer the fights become. This is going to be quite the contest. Hmm. Uh, you, uh... You okay there, March 7th? Ether Spirit? Copy! What? Let's see. Whoa, a gold Albert! Back in this March! Do I look like some paddle pet to you? <laughs> you can't just collect anything and everything. <laughs> just curious. <laughs> a reminder to our esteemed contestants. Numerous players from across the universe will be partaking in Ethereum Wars. Okay. As you progress, new opponents will be revealed. After completing all challenges, exhibition matches await, where you might end up face to face with some unexpected opponents. And should you rise to the occasion and overcome the Interastral Tournament Festival challenges, you'll receive IPC sponsored eligibility for a specially selected four star character. 
And okay. there you have it. The full rundown on Ethereum Wars. Hope you all have fun and remember to I, treat your I combat I companions have all four of them though. <laughs> uh, uh, I've got a meeting to get to. <sighs> Bye for now. Huh? You're leaving so soon? Mm-hmm. Yes. But I'm sure our paths will cross again. Over to you and Albert. Keep up the good work. There will be a year-end bonus for everyone when we roll out the new project. <laughs> right. <laughs> Thank you, Director. Your wisdom, foresight, and mentorship know no bounds. Take care now. Stay safe out there. I should be going, too. There's some maintenance on the Express to attend to. Hope to catch you all soon. Uh, thanks for all the help, Himeko. See you soon. And now it's just much Is it gone? Albert? Gone? Topaz and Emiko. I think so. You sure? Ah, uh, yes. Take a look for yourself. See? Told you. All gone. Nobody here but me. Nobody else on the line. Phew. That's a relief. <laughs> All those gifts. <laughs> if you ask me, Topaz is just abusing her position to engage in a personal pastime. Uh-huh. Topaz's personal pastime? What's that? Uh, isn't it obvious to you? Maybe you should take another look at the specifics of this event? Hmm, let me think. Uh, I got it! So Topaz's personal pastime is... hunting! Duh? Hunting? Miss March, what gave you that impression? I... uh, well, isn't that right, though? Uh, I'll show so. you. This event is all about sneaking up slowly and then... Hey! Whoa, 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 whoa. slow down a second. <laughs> Topaz's pastime was cuddling creatures, not hunting them. As soon as she gets home, she grabs her pets and cuddles the heck out of them. She's got hundreds at her company apartment. Huh? Did you say hundreds? How does she have the space? <clears throat> well, her company apartment is an ecological starship. Uh, okay. Meanwhile, my feathery butt's in his studio from the 2020s. Uh... Topaz lives it up in a giant starship over at Corporate HQ. Well, I get my unpack lunches in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> I get there, Hopper. <clears throat> Let's shift our attention to some of the other thrilling events coming our way. Exactly. First off, during the 1.4 release, the Planar Infinity event is making its debut. Herda that and three me. other members of the Genius Society made some small renovations to the simulated universe. But each of them threw a spanner in the works. With the code damage, the universe is beginning to expand exponentially. Madam Herda wanted me to pass a message on to our trailblazer. That ain't <laughs> Don't okay. panic. Just a minor bug. You will be compensated. Minor bug? Really? It doesn't sound like it. It's true. The spanners in question cause the simulated universe's blessings and curios to multiply. Uh, as such, in Planar Infinity's ordinary plane challenges, trailblazers can obtain some wonderful buffs. For Whoa. example? For example, a cosmic big lotto that won't disappoint. Oh, okay. wow. <laughs> See what I mean? Following an ordinary plane challenge, Trailblazers will enter Herda's Manic Plane with their buffs in tow. Every time Trailblazers successfully challenge a wave of enemies, a floor okay. is successfully cleared. As floors are cleared, what's, Trailblazers what's the 30 will face FPS off increasingly um, difficult frame, enemies until... Uh-oh, I knew there was a catch. Now we have to fight attrition warfare? Herder wants to test the limits of the simulated universe's memory. Okay. Don't panic, Ms. March. As long as Trailblazers obtain as many buffs as they can in the ordinary plane challenges, they'll be able to face down the manic plane with full strength. Trust me, in the simulated universe, anything is possible. Really? Okay. I don't believe you. You must believe me! I promise, Trailblazers, <laughs> it's a walk in the park. I'm begging you. Uh, now I we'll really find out once the 1.4 drops. Course, and of course, there's movie. Gift of Odyssey of freaking course. Uh, come on, y'all. Give it up in the back. Of <laughs> course. Check it in. <laughs> 
Why didn't Genshin get this also stuff? Also in 1.4, we'll now be welcoming in a story replay feature. When interacting with characters in the story, oh, Twilight Agents hallelujah! can now and review surrounding context. All that juicy story and all recap? and taste recap? and Hell yes! Hell place. yes! Waiting I want a recap of Capcom's Companion Quest! Give me that for your so purpose! Give me a recap of Capcom's we'll Companion Quest! Give me that! of the Planar Fisher and Realm of the Strange Events! During the events, successfully challenging the simulated universe and Cavern of, of Corrosion can earn you a set amount double of rewards double rewards for um, relics. Yeah, nice double rewards! <laughs> some people are farming the cavern like crazy every day. Tell me about it. They can it. save themselves some time. Exactly. Would you be one of those people, Miss March? Me? No way. Well, Pom Pom never stops talking about that mysterious recipe they found. Things are gonna get real busy soon. And what's a recipe gotta do with being busy? It's not just the recipe. Pom Pom's oh, been talking okay. about organizing and a whole food much tour event. Fine, though. Uh, so strange. Nobody even knows where the recipe came from. What if Pom Pom runs into bad guys on the tour? I need to protect the conductor. Ha! <laughs> I get it now. You wanna pose as a bodyguard to get a bunch of free snacks. Damn, hey, much that's looking slander. Fine, also, like, it would, it, would it be much better if we get alternative costumes for all the characters as well? Like the ones that we see right now. We'll I kinda want an alternative costume for March. She looks so goddamn fine, here. man. Holy crap. <laughs> and now for the moment you've all been waiting for. Just... Redemption codes! Codes, codes, codes! We are honored to introduce Honkai Star Rail to the PlayStation 5 on October 11th. PlayStation 5 is a perfect platform for this space journey, allowing our team to tap into full potential of the console. The story of Honkai Star Rail is only getting started. Now with added technical features on PlayStation 5, Wow, the team of Honkai, they, they really know how to speak English, unlike the, 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 the Genshin team. I'm aboard Maybe it's just me. Press on this October 11th. Adventure has no limits. And may this journey lead us Star Wars. Thank you for your efforts. October 11. Mark your well, calendars. that's everything for today. Thanks for tuning in to our special program and see uh -huh. you in the... Uh, wait, Albert, who's the main presenter here? Shouldn't I be the one to bring the show to a close? Uh, my bad, my bad, force a habit. In that case, oh, is there anything our main presenter would like to say to the audience? <laughs> Let me think. Uh, oh yeah, uh, don't forget to like, follow, and share. Let's get to 50 billion views. What the hell? <laughs> 50 billion. You might want to take a few zeros out there, Mark. <laughs> anyway, I got a flap. <laughs> They're not paying me enough overtime, that's for sure. So whether or not your world has a day-night cycle, good morning, good afternoon, and get yourself home already. Albert, sign it off. Bye-bye. Wait, Albert? <laughs> Aw, he really made a break for it. Uh, anyway, so that's all for today's program. Thanks a lot for tuning in. I'm your host, March 7th. Wishing all you guys a great day! And that's the end of version 1.4 special program. And I enjoyed it so far. <sighs> Finally! <laughs> I'm exhausted. Huh? Really? Oh, thank you, thank you! Actually, I was feeling super nervous. Oh, no, no. You guys did all the hard work. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> huh? Is the program link up already? Uh, I'll share it with my friend. <laughs> hey, you see my stream just now? You said you'd be tuning in. <laughs> link is... Already up, by the way. I just shared with you. Remember to watch the whole thing. I'll be checking. Who is she messaging, though? Huh? Uh, 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 uh. 
Lol. Cute. And that's the end of version 1.4 special program. For real. And oh gosh, oh, man, I, and this, I'm I'm in a dilemma, man. At first, I only I originally wanted Genie only, but after watching um, Topaz's gameplay and features, right, I kind of want her, man. But at the same time, right, oh, I'm just I'm a I'm a free to play. Oh gosh, looks like looks like I gotta collect a a tons load of um. Of re of um of resources. Okay, so this as for the um the first special program itself, right? Okay, to sum it to sum it um, perfectly, right? We got a um an ex something like an extra episode of uh of the Yarilo Six um arc where Topaz will be coming over for some unknown reason. And then um, we'll be getting a companion mission for um, where mo most likely we'll be gaining some um, more lore on Jing Yu, the Jingmen Blade, Dunghang, and whatnot. And then and as for the event, it's basically um, a tournament of some kind. And then also there's the uh, the simulated universe is getting an, is getting update. And I think that's pretty much um, that pretty much sums up what's uh, what are the updates for version 1.4. But man, I I'm in a delay. I'm in a dilemma, man. Oh. Now uh, after watching version 1.4, I kind of want both Jinyu and Topaz. Oh boy, should I start throwing money into this game already? Ah. <laughs> uh, oh. I'll think about it. I'll, 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 I'll think about it when the time comes. And um, it's kind of ref um, ha having uh, having March Seven as uh, as the uh, main president uh, pre presenter is kind of a uh, it's kind of it's kind of fresh for 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 once. But to be very honest, I kind of prefer Albert as the main presenter for future future special programs. But um, but how about I? Why not? Why not have both Albert and March Seven as the presenters of the special program? Cause why not, right? I mean, I mean, I'm okay with um March Seven as the presenter, but but some I'm pretty sure some uh, people would prefer, uh, are already used to use and comfortable having Albert as um as the main presenter, and so why not, right? Why not have both Albert and March Seven as both uh, 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 the presenters for future special programs? I'm pretty sure. I mean, because because why not, right? Because why not, right? <laughs>